Welcome to Backroom Breakdown with Lauren, your weekly analysis of local, state, and federal politics. This is DITV's weekly politics segment where I'll discuss important political events impacting Iowa City. I'm your host, Lauren Johnson. On Wednesday, a panel of Democratic National Committee members voted to strip Iowa of its first-in-the-nation caucus status. The Rules and Bylaws Committee's new plan will require Iowa Democrats to argue why they should get this coveted status back. Currently, Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Nevada all have waivers from the DNC that allow them to hold their contests prior to the other states. The new plan requires all of them to apply for a new waiver and opens up the application to other states that may want early voting. The goal is to restructure the early voting process to better reflect the modern Democratic Party. Some criteria that a state must fulfill in order to have this waiver granted include the competitiveness of elections in a state and the diversity of the state. In the committee meeting Wednesday, there was some discussion over having the resolution favor primaries over caucuses, but this was cut from the final resolution. However, that debate, as well as the new criteria for early nomination, makes it clear that Iowa will struggle to regain their first-in-the-nation caucus status. Iowa's primary elections are unique in that the political parties run them. This means that any changes to Iowa's Democratic caucuses will not affect Iowa's Republican caucuses. However, Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley pointed out this could impact Republican caucuses in the future. If the Democrats want to go to a different direction, uh, it might not hurt Republicans being first in the nation, but it's going to, uh, it's, it could down the road, 28 or 32, affect uh, Iowa being first in the nation on either party, you know, but right now, uh, I'm, I'm happy that the Democrats and Republicans in Iowa are sticking together on that. Representative Ashley Hinson believes that Iowans are good at holding politicians accountable and choosing good candidates. Well, I think first and foremost, we should be fighting to have that first in the nation status. Iowans know how to vet presidential candidates. While this first in the nation status has given Iowa incredible national exposure, it's true that Iowa's demographics are not reflective of the modern Democratic Party. According to a study published by Pew Research Center, as of 2019, just 59% of Democratic voters were white. The 2020 census shows that white people make up 90.6% of Iowa's population. That is a difference of over 30% between the racial demographics of the Democratic Party versus the state of Iowa. Additionally, around 72% of Democratic voters have some college education, while 29% of Iowans have at least a bachelor's degree. When the data is considered, Iowa is not representative of the demographics of the modern Democratic Party at all. Additionally, Iowa has historically been a swing state where Democratic and Republican candidates have had equal chances of winning. In the 2020 election, Iowa's races were safe for Republicans. Although pollsters believed that the 2020 elections would be close, Republicans won big in Iowa and flipped two seats in the U.S. House. Democrats losing in Iowa has been a slow trend that became very apparent that year, and it leads to the question of why the Democratic Party would want to keep their first caucuses in a state they have a low chance of winning. When considering all of the data, it makes sense that the Democratic Party would want to remove Iowa's first in the nation status. Thanks for tuning in to Backroom Breakdown. I'll be back next week with more of the latest political news affecting Iowa City, Iowa, and the USA. I'm Lauren Johnson. Have a great day.